Hi, this is Julie Harland, and I'm your math gal. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com, where you can search for any of my videos organized by topic. I'm going to show you an easy way to multiply by 5 when you have decimals. You want to already watch the video on just multiplying by 5 with whole numbers. So here's a little review of that. If you're doing 22 times 5, note that 5 just means 1 half times 10. So instead of doing 22 times 5, we could just 22 times a half times 10, which means just take half of 22 and multiply by 10. So here we are. You don't want to have to write all that down. 22 times 5, you just take half of 22, which is 11, and multiplying by 10 means you just add a 0 to the end. That works with whole numbers when you multiply by 10. All right, so what's it going to be if I had 2.2 times 5? Okay. Well, there's two ways of thinking about this. 5 is still half of 10, so you could either multiply by 10 and then take half, or you could take half and then multiply by 10. With decimals, it's usually easier to multiply by 10 first. So if you multiply by 10, you just move the decimal one to the right. So you have 22, and now take half of that, which means divide it by 2, so the answer is 11. So 2.2 times 5 is 11. Let's look at another example. All right, so let's do 4.6 times 5. I'm going to multiply by 10 first. So if I multiply by 10, and you could do that in your head, you think 46 divided by 2, right? Because you multiply by 10 and then divide by 2. Dividing by 2 is the same thing as taking half of 46. And you get 23. Now let's say you want to take half of it first. That's fine. If you take half of 4.6, it's 2.3. And then when you multiply by 10, you move the decimal one to the right, and you get 23. Now, all of this, what I'm writing down here, the 46 divided by 2 and 2.3 times 10, could be done in your head. So this is how I think about it. I do that in my head. I think, well, 4.6 times 5, I'm going to multiply by 10. That's 46. Half of 46 is 23. Still not as easy as doing it with whole numbers, but you don't have to go out on the side and do all this stuff here which is, you know, you get 3, and then you get 23, and then you move the decimal. You still are going to get the same answer, 23.0. It's just that this is a way of doing it in your head, if you'd like to do it that way. Let's look at it one more time, 46, 4.6 times 5. Now, when you actually learn how to, do, to multiply decimals, it says ignore the decimal points and just multiply. So you could totally ignore the decimal point and say, well, what's 46 times 5? Well, you just take half of 46, which is 23, right, and add the 0 times 10. And then you count how many places are after the decimal point here, and you come in one spot, and you're also going to get 23. So no matter how you look at it, 4.6 times 5 is 23. And there isn't just one way of thinking about it, but I'm showing you ways of doing it without having to write out a little multiplication problem onto, over to the right. So let's do another one. All right, so let's say we have 6.24 times 5. Okay, I'm going to do it by not even worrying about the decimals. I'm just going to first multiply 624 by 5. And to do that, you take half of 624, which is 312, and add a 0, right? So I'm just doing the whole number part only. And then I see there are two digits after the decimal point, so my final answer has to have two places after the decimal point, so my answer is just 31.2. Okay, see how I did that? Ignore, ignore the decimal, use the rule for just multiplying 20, 624 times 5. Okay, another way of thinking about it. You could always just take half a 6.24. Okay, half a 6.24 is 3.12. And then you're going to multiply by 10. You move the decimal one to the right. So the answer is 31.2. Again, someone else may multiply by 10 first. They think, OK, I'm going to multiply by 10 first, which means move the decimal one to the right. 
and then divide by 2. 31.2, keep getting 31.2, but I'm not doing any long multiplication problem. Here are three problems for you to try. See if you could do this without having to do regular multiplication. All right, here's how I do the first one. I have 4.4 .4 times 5. I'm going to multiply by 10 first, which is 44, and then take half. So half of 44 is 22. You might have done it a different way, but I hope you also got 22. Now, you should look and see if that seems like a reasonable number. The problem is approximately 4 times 5. If you just ignore the decimal, 4 times 5, but it's actually bigger than 4, so, you know, 22 seems reasonable. All right, let's do the next one. 0.68 times 5. I'm just going to do 68 times 5. I'm going to ignore the decimal this time. And to do 68 times 5, we take half of 68, 34, and add a 0, right? because that's multiplying by 10. And now I deal with the decimal point. My answer's got to have two places after the decimal point, just like the 0.68 does. So my answer is 3.4. All right, 2.04 times 5. So this time I'm going to, again, just ignore the decimal point and multiply 204 times 5. So I'm going to take half of 204, which is 102, and I'm going to multi then multiply by 10, add the 0, and now I'm going to deal with this, these two places after the decimal point, just like I did in the previous problem, so I get 10.2. And this one's also easy to check that that seems reasonable because it's approximately 2 times 5, or 10. Well, what if I don't just have it multiplying by 5, but if you ignore the decimal, I just see the 5. What we want to do is go ahead and ignore the decimals, multiply the numbers, and then deal with the decimal points. So we could use our trick for multiplying by 5. So I just think of this as 44 times 5, which means half of 44, and add a 0. And now I move the decimal points in. I have one, two places. should be after the decimal, so my answer is... 2.2. Let's do one more like that. Let's say you had 0.32 times 0 0.05. Again, I'm just going to ignore the decimals because that's what I taught you about multiplying decimals. 32 times 5. How do you do that? You take half of 32, which is 16, and add a 0. But now I have to put the decimal in the correct place. Well, I've got two places after the, dec after the decimal here, two places after the decimal here, so my final answer has to have four places after the decimal. So this is 0 .0160 or 0 .016 is how we would usually write that. All right, so how about you try a couple? So try these two problems on your own. Put the video on pause to give yourself time to do it on your own first, but try to do it mainly in your head. All right, for this first one, again, I'm going to ignore the decimals. I've got 26 times 5, so that's half of 26. That is 0. And now I've got how many places after the decimal points? I've got 1, 2, 3, so my answer has to have 3 places after the decimal. So it's got to be 0 0.130 or 0 0.13. Next one, I'm going to think of this as just 68 times 5. So half of 68 is 34, and add a 0. And 68 had, there's no decimal point in there, but I, you know, no numbers after the decimal point, no digits after the decimal point, but there's 3 for the point zero zero five, So I have to go in three places, so my answer is point three four zero. Oops, point three four. <laughs> okay, so that's how you can multiply with 5 or point five or point zero five or 50. Oh, let's do one of those. Let's do 68 times 50. Well, I'm just going to do that by doing 68 times 5, which is half of 68 and add a 0. But then i got to put that extra 0 because it was really 50. Aha! Uh -huh. See? Now I could also do it for multiplying by 50. How about if you had 3.4 times 500? 
Okay. Now, so I've got a decimal point in there, I've got extra zeros, but basically there's like a times five in there. So I'm going to first think of it as 34 times five. Okay, so that's half of 34, add a zero. Now, I'm going to put the two extra zeros for this 500, right? And then I got to go back one place for that decimal point. And there you go, 1700. Okay, that really taxes your brain, I admit it. But I think you can do it, so I'm going to give you another one to try. All right, the last one on the video, 0.44 times 50. Try that. Of course, there's always more than one way to do this, but I'm going to just think of it as 44 times 5 to begin with. So half of 44 is 22. Add the 0. Now add that 0, right? Now, you got to go back in two places for the decimal point, and your answer is 22. Alrighty, so all really using the basic ideas of what we know about decimals, multiplying with extra zeros after numbers, and then now our easy way of multiplying by 5. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you can view all of my videos which are organized by topic.